lot of issues like global trade and economics and financial services and all those good things. <coughs> and now at the Center for Media and Democracy, we, we publish a lot of websites. Our main reporting website is prwatch.org. And if you're not getting our weekly email newsletter, please sign up for it on the clipboard that's going around because it tells you everything that's happening with the Cokes and Alec here in the state of Wisconsin and across the United States. Um, and we have two other sites. One is Alec Exposed, which some of you have heard of. And the other site is sourcewatch.org, which is a Wikipedia with 100,000 articles that has a lot of information about basically what I call the right-wing infrastructure and all the different groups and organizations and front groups and think tanks and stink tanks and all sorts of things that are um, going on there. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Alex today and then tell you about some other groups you need to keep an eye on. So have folks heard of Alex? And I don't think Alex is all of oh, okay. We've got experts here, lots of experts here. So uh, the American Legislative Exchange Council brings together you know, legislators from across the country and major corporations um, to you know, come up with legislation behind closed doors. Um, it is the task force that they have are still closed to the public, uh, still closed <coughs> to the press. And um, they cook up bills that then come back to state houses and um, are spread across the land. So it's sort of a one-stop shop for big industry. Like when AT&T wanted to um, deregulate uh, uh, state by state, the telecom and cable and Time Warner wanted to do all that. They went to Alec, they had a bunch of model bills, and they went state by state by state by state um, deregulating. When Big Tobacco wants to pass some weirdo tax break for some weirdo new tobacco product. Has anybody heard of Snooze? No. Okay, it's a chewable tobacco product. You could put it in your um, cheek and you could chew it. You don't have to spit. So it's particularly popular with children because they've given it cherry flavor and grape flavors and all these great flavors, bubblegum flavor, snooze, and, um, uh, and you can have it in your cheek and the teacher doesn't know it's not gum, right? Because it smells like gum, it looks like gum. And, um, and so Big Tobacco had it, it wanted to get a tax break for its snooze product and it handed the bill to Alberta Darling and she put it right in the budget. Wasn't that nice of her? Oh. And um, it almost went through, except for one of the uh, first, and perhaps well, it was certainly the first, uh, only time we gave a shout out for Scott Walker because he vetoed it. But that year, 32 other Alice bills were introduced. This is 2011, 2012 session. Um, and, uh, and Wisconsin saw a flood of Alec bills in the tort area, and the, the tort being um, uh, 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 civil justice area. Um, the tort reforms that were done make it harder for consumers like you to sue corporations that kill or maim your families or loved ones. Um, a lot of bills in the education area. Alec is very pro-voucher, pro-privatization of education. It's pushed this agenda for years and years and years. Um, and a whole bunch of diversity of bills. Um, uh, Alec has a very unique relationship here in Wisconsin because Tommy Thompson was an early Alec supporter and uh, booster. Um, Governor Walker was an Alec alumni, uh, it was an Alec member of all during the time he was in the legislature. Early on, he introduced and way back in like 91 or 92, he introduced a right to work bill back then, which makes it harder for unions to organize. And today, Leah Buchmere um, is a state senator here in our state, and she will be the new ALEC head next year. So we have this unique and wonderful relationship with ALEC in the state. Um, um, uh, the, it wasn't just this wave of ballot bills in 2011, 2012, it's still happening now. Mm -hmm. So they introduced right to work this year and we just took a look at it and it, as soon as it popped and we did the side by side, it was a verbatim ALEC bill, um, which seemed to come as a surprise to some of the people in the legislature. Um, prevailing wage repeal, an ALEC bill. Um, the civil service repeal, an ALEC bill. I mean, this is just sort of ridiculous. You know, um, and we're definitely at ground zero for this type of uh, experimentation. When we did a report in the back called the hijacking of the state, and so if you, uh, it's a report about the 2011-2012 session, and so if you want more details, you can go there. Now, on the good news front, um, 
Uh, when we published the ALEC bills in 2011, now everybody can access them all over the United States, and we get a lot of calls and a lot of interest, and people are like, is this an ALEC bill, is that an ALEC bill, what's going on here? Um, and uh, uh, we won awards for that, but really the, the awards go out to folks like you who have written and called and done all sorts of things to try and convince corporations to stop funding this cookie cutter agenda. And um, over the years, we've convinced 106 corporations, including huge corporations like General Motors, General Electric, Coca-Cola, Walmart, um, to drop out. 106 have. And right now, our next uh, corporation that we're working on is UPS. So there are UPS postcards addressed to the CEO of UPS in the back. And if you wouldn't mind taking one and sticking up, stamp on it and signing it, we'd appreciate it. Because it's ridiculous that UPS and FedEx are in ALEC and they have both the transportation agenda there and then they have a privatization agenda there as well. But there's some other groups that I want you to be aware of. First of all, ALEC has started its little brother group and it's called ACE, the American City and County Exchange. <laughs> and so now it's reaching out to all sorts of local government officials and saying, come to, uh, come to the ACE meeting uh, and you'll get lots of good ideas. And what's the first good idea ACE had? Once again, right to work. They want to do it at the local level. Um, uh, so it's a local right to work. Another bill is local privatization. And it's sort of the same agenda again. Uh, but there's something like 50,000 or more local officials that they're now going to be uh, reaching out to. So we're trying to keep an eye on ACE in the same way that you can keep an eye on out. Another group I want you to know about is the State Policy Network. State Policy Network, we call it SPIN. And um, the State Policy Network is uh, 64 state-based think tanks. So there's one and sometimes two in every state. And does anybody know what our two are? You can, get, you can get a star for this one. Wisconsin Policy. Yeah, WPRI, Wisconsin Policy Research Group, it is one of our SPIN. WPRI, yeah. Wisconsin Policy Research Institute. And then uh, the other is MacGyver. And um, these are think tanks, um, but they are centrally funded. $84 million operation. ALEC is like a $9 million operation. So this is much bigger. And their main purpose is to take the ALEC agenda and do academic reports on them. OK? So, so they produce they, these. They produce studies and academic reports that say right to work is a great idea. Okay. Then there's another institution called the Franklin Center. Anybody know what the Franklin Center is? For government accountability. Is that what it's called?
am I missing here? Oh, and what I'm missing is that also the dark money groups, like the Americans for Prosperity, the Koch-funded Americans for Prosperity, which is not only a dark money vehicle in the elections, they do these phony issue ads that Jay was talking about, but um, they are fake grassroots. Okay, so the Alec politicians introduced right to work in the state of Wisconsin. Here comes the identical Alec Bill, right to work. Here come the SPN academics. Richard Vetter, the Alec scholar, came to testify. No, he didn't come to testify. He did a study here, which was presented by WPRI as their own work. And they came to testify in the legislature, saying right to work works excellently for Wisconsin. And it was a cookie cutter study because he had done four others previously for other states. Then the Franklin Center goes, there's a brilliant study. You know, <laughs> I right to work, it must be true. This is a great policy for Wisconsin. And Americans for Prosperity sends out a news release saying, we love right to work. There's all sorts of grassroots Wisconsinites who love this bill. And that is how the Coke machine works in our state and many other states. And you and so you, you guys you guys listen to a guy named Charlie Sykes, right? Oh. And Charlie has all these people on his show and it all seems very academic. This this seems disconnected from this, which seems disconnected from this, which seems disconnected from this and this. And they're all on Charlie's show saying it's a great idea. Um, nothing quite like this exists on the liberal side of the spectrum. We sort of try and coordinate, you know, people sort of try and get things together, but I, you know, I just don't see it happening. Um, uh, not everything that happens in the universe, however, is necessarily Alex. Sometimes it's just like a dumb idea. So this year, one of the things that, um, one of the things I'm proudest of is that Center for Media and Democracy started reading the budget the day after the budget was introduced. And we noticed that Scott Walker struck the search for truth in the Wisconsin idea out of the budget. So we were the first group to report on that. And within hours, it was on the front page of every newspaper in the state and in the New York, in New York Times and in the Washington Post. Um, and we are now um, doing the lawsuit over the drafting error issue. Um, because we, we and every other reporter in the state put an open records request as soon as Scott Walker said it was a drafting error. And, um, and they denied, they partially, they gave, they gave some documents, but they denied other documents. And they denied it under this vague sort of language about, oh, well, our deliberative process really should be behind closed doors. We really shouldn't have to tell the public about what we're doing. And the next thing you know, on 4th of July weekend, mm -hmm. Robin Voss and company introduce uh, a budget measure that, that excludes all deliberative process materials. And that's not just for the governor, it was every level of government, whether it was your local school board, your um, county officials, your coroner, I don't know, maybe the coroner has a deliberative process. You know, everybody. <coughs> and, and they could call whatever they wanted deliberative process. So it would have been a devastating blow to the open records law. And they, because folks like you wrote in, and lots of Republicans wrote in over the weekend too, and people were pissed about this. They backed down. But they're still fighting and legislating that, trying to legislate that issue through our lawsuit. So we are in court now but, uh, on this particular issue, and we're hoping we're going to win. So I'm going to stop there because I know folks have questions, and this was like a a lot to uh, a lot to go on.